Brian. Good afternoon, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. He will be back tomorrow. Take a look at what we got going on today. We have the ES Mini about flat today. The Russell up about 0.15%. NQs, again, just down slightly 0.22%. The Dow futures up about 0.29%. We kind of have a flat market today. Um, some of the bonds kind of going down in price. We'll talk a little bit about that and what that kind of means for rates going forward. We have Tesla uh, kind of got eviscerated uh, the other day up about 0.6% currently, uh, but trading from about a monthly high of 265 down to 239. Steel Dynamics down, we were looking yesterday at about 120, um, kind of volatile right now, at least for the price, um, down about 1.69% today. Take a look at some of the more base metals here. We have gold, that was actually trading up a bit. Uh, we're at 2,051 on the contract. Uh, and then silver really gave up a lot of its gains up from that peak of about 26.35, trading right now at 23.22. Copper staying pretty strong, like that contract at $3.84. Crude oil, so there's a lot of stuff going on that's gonna impact, I think, energy prices here. Uh, there's a lot of tension in the Red Sea. Uh, a lot of oil kind of moves through this area. We had the shipping giant Maersk um, resume shipping through there. Now, I mean, a lot of supplies go through the Red Sea. Uh, so, you know, this tensions impact uh, a lot of things, but oil will be uh, number one in here. And I think we're going to see a jump. We'll talk a bit about that. I get concerned with seeing this oil jump. Um, you know, prices have actually been pretty low recently, even at the pump uh, for a lot of consumers, which is awesome. Uh, if there's anything that kind of gets, you know, impacted on the oil end here and prices go up, that's obviously going to skew the uh, total CPI. And that might cause some kind of uh, reaction in a way that we don't all like, especially for holders. Let's take a look a little more. The dollar trading flat right now. We're at 102.43, looking probably to retest around the 103 area. You know, a higher dollar, you know, that gets a more depressed market. Um, and we haven't seen a lot of movement in the way that we would like to see the dollar move. QQQ sideways. Google down about 1.09%. Meta. Pretty, pretty low, pretty sideways at least, rather. About 347.28. Disney uh, down at 90, so we're trading down about a buck. Uh, from yesterday, Apple at 182.47 in the SPY. We're trading at 468.96. Uh, took a look at, you know, the kind of global market as a whole. Uh, the Eurozone is anticipating uh, pretty intense inflation. Um, Inflation is still rising in the Eurozone, even though they believed that things were going to kind of pull back like we're seeing here. Uh, now, this is bringing some doubts over rate cuts. Of course, you know, we're not the Eurozone, but this does impact us in some capacity. Um, essentially, the French released their figures earlier this morning. Um, it was rising about 4.1 percent, which is OK, but that's up from 3.9 percent from November. Uh, so we are seeing an increase there. Um, Germany is getting really hammered with it. It's about to be released here. It's going to be a jump basically 3.8% uh, from 2.3 in November. If we see this kind of spread out, uh, we might have a more prolonged kind of stage of seeing rates going to get pulled back, right? We spoke about yesterday how the Fed is kind of thinking about we're going to reduce some rates. Uh, they didn't release kind of a roadmap for that. They said probably by the end of the year, uh, we'll have three quarter point uh, reductions. But still, you know, if you get something like we were talking about with oil comes in and prices get kind of skewed. And again, I, I know that's not the core CPI, uh, but, but I think one of the things that bothers me about all of that is if core CPI is bad, um, but, you know, energy is lower, you know, for that reporting cycle, then it's a good thing. Um, obviously, if CPI in general is just high, but core CPI down, that's a good thing. There's this spin that exists, right, um, that kind of just persists in the media, especially when CPI is released. Uh, I have a feeling that if, again, if energy gets a lot higher this next kind of cycle, uh, we might see some of that kind of euphoria coming from the uh, talk about a pullback in rates kind of dissipate. We might see some sell-off. Not sure. We'll have to wait to see on that. 
We take a look a little bit more about this. Uh, the oil contracts really are surging. Let's take a look here. Are we? We're sideways right now, 72.23 uh, in the Brent. Again, we just have a little bit of this tick up here. Uh, yesterday, they were surging around 3%. There's obviously protests over high fuel prices, uh, at least in Libya. This affects um, oil field production in Libya. That completely halted it entirely. Um, there's ongoing concerns over Yemen's, uh, the Houthis, which are backed by Iran. Of course, there are some issues with um, Iranian drones hitting uh, some big shipments, essentially, right? So this whole area is under a lot of kind of intensity. And again, if this gets impacted, these trade routes get impacted, we might see a bad uh, total CPI going forward. Take a look here. We're going to look at four, just for some other news during the day. Uh, up about 7.1% in the U.S., uh, vehicle sales, rather. Best year since 2019 for Ford. The sales increased about 7% last year, marking the automaker's best sales since 2020, coming in lower than the overall industry's growth. Ford on Thursday reported sales of nearly 2 million vehicles in 2023, which is 7.1% increase from the previous year. Uh, the company finished third in overall U.S. sales. That is trailing Toyota and General Motors. Ford's overall 2023 sales are lower than the industries, which auto data uh, firms topped about 15.6 million total uh, of last year. Of course, we've been seeing Ford try to get into the electric vehicle uh, area. Again, I, I think some of these old kind of traditional vehicle makers are going to have a hard time pivoting away because their infrastructure just isn't really focused on that. Uh, Volkswagen has been doing a good job. We'll talk a little bit uh, about them in the coming segments. They're I have a deal with Quantum Scope, okay, and these guys make a solid state lithium battery. We'll talk a little bit about that, but it was actually majorly successful. Um, this was positive for Volkswagen. Quantum Scape went up like, let me see here. Yeah, almost 50% today. So we'll talk a little bit about why that is and what that kind of technology, uh, how that plays a role and how it may impact other companies like Tesla uh, and so on. So folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.